This is another project that's been waiting to get finished off. It's uh, the Quilt As You Go Hexi Runner that I've been making for the dining table. I've been using vintage linens that I cut up to make the middles and a lot of my scraps. The back is just as beautiful as the front really. This is the other side. This, this bit here is from the blouse that I made for Naomi when she was here and that one was her trousers. I was asked about a possible tutorial so that's what I'm going to show you today because I have actually finished all of the hexes themselves and what I'm busy finishing off at the moment is this needle lace edging which takes two rows to go round uh, but I thought it was a really nice way of finishing off so I'm going to show you how to do the quilt as you go and then how to do the needle lace edging. Um, I'm cheating because I actually used pre-cut hexagons and so I'll put a link in the description because this is a, a British company, Ashmead Designs and they uh, have a thing called Hexiform and this is Hexiform. So it's a, it is a batting, it's quite thin but it has, it has enough for what you need on, on your quilt as you go and it has this very smooth cottony side whether you can see that the smooth cottony side and then a puffy fluffy side but all in all it's maybe only a couple of mils thick so this saves me even having to cut out the wadding but of course you could do that and they sell them in every imaginable size and shape. They do all the dual forms, they do squares, rectangles, they do everything. Anyway, I have really got addicted to making them because it's a way of using up scraps. And I know you could still do grandmother's flower garden and all of that, but um, what I like to do is I like everything to look scrappy because I use up my scraps etc. Because I'm cutting out each individual one I just cut them out with the scissors as I go. So that's my little template and I just go around and I draw around them usually and then cut out. That one's actually a bit big. The main thing is using the little window I can either fussy cut uh, pieces out of my scraps or what I really like to do is use the bits of vintage linen and I try and use every bit. I've got a neutral thread in my needle which is just a little sharp. I put my thimble on. So the backing fabric goes downwards. I put a hexagon in the middle. I centre my pretty bit. Actually I think I think that'll be better off with another. I centre that one on there. And I, honestly, I just do it all by hand. So I just double fold that and I finger press it like that. I hold it in. I don't bother pinning anything because I'm, I'm lazy <laughs> and I like to do things. I just like to hold things and get on. And then I am taking the tiniest little hemming stitches through. And if I need to adjust... As I go then I do that but usually by holding it in I can actually keep it steady enough to sew round. And what I, I like about this whole thing is that well with quilting, quilt as you go in particular is that once you've finished your last quilt as you go piece uh, then your quilt's finished. No, no need to put a backing on no need to do extra quilting unless you particularly want to but both sides are finished at the same time and nothing needs to be taken apart so that's why I'm particularly enjoying them so I get up to the next line and I usually just put it down fold them over make sure I've got a really nice mitered corner I put an, I put one stitch in the corner to hold it down and come back down to the back down to the little hem 
so I've kept that corner in and then I just carry on round and I do use just this neutral beige thread or a neutral grey this is the one I've got at the moment this just neutral beige sewing thread um, because it's the one that you see least and I try and make as small a stitch as I can as I'm going round it and just like putting the binding on a, on a big quilt I'm going straight down from where my thread comes out skipping along a quarter of an inch and just coming up about two threads onto the binding that's coming over and a few stitches sees you to the next corner twice fold over I sort of arrange it so that I know that my corners are meeting up there to give it a secure I only use one stitch to secure usually and carry on round and it's really satisfying it's very portable um, if I go out and I know I'm going to be somewhere it's so easy just to put a few hexagons and a few of the hexiform in my little project bag and as long as I've got the thread I can I can make them up I don't need to um, put them together at the same time but that's part of the the pleasure of having a scrappy project as well it means that things can go wherever they want I finished the first one it just makes a lovely finished in its entirety little tiny miniature quilt and they feel quite puffy quite nice so I finished that one off normally I would add that to my main thing but I've actually don't need any more for that so I'll make another little thing with these ones but that's what's nice with the hexi quilt as you go each little hexagon is finished and so you can do a little mat or you could make small ones I think they go right down to tiny little hexagons uh, this these are one and a half hexagons so one and a half along the along that long side that's one and a half inch that's what these ones are I'm going to do another one I'm going to use this scrap for the back which is actually a scrap um, left over from the dress I've just made I don't know whether I mentioned before but the the bit that goes down to the backing is the flat cotton bit so that's the bit you need facing down onto your backing fabric and then this time I am going to use this little bit of old tray cloth because I think this beige will show it up really nicely and start with a double fold I'm sure people are thinking I should be pinning it or clipping it or they just get in my way I'd rather just make it as nice as I can and hold it in my fingers and start off and do exactly the same slip stitch round they, they don't take very long I mean a couple of minutes to get right round them but when I've finished this one I'll show you how I've been joining them together or, or how they do get joined together I think everybody must join them together exactly the same as I do so this is going to be the second project that's getting finished this week and I think I've got I've got another two or three I'm hopeful of anyway well, they're very satisfying to do and I just think especially because I like working with the old the old linens and I do cut them up if I've got something special for them to be put into I just think they're just such each little hexy is a frame for some beautiful old linen and if I've used it for something else anyway these are little bits of scraps that uh, deserve their moment in the in the in the sunshine by getting used I'll just hold that sometimes I think I, I do the I do the big ones a little on the large side to give me a chance to fold them over and then I 
I sometimes clip them back ever so slightly if I think there's too much fabric. This is such a good project if you're watching TV or you can just sit down on an evening or sit outside in the sunshine and stitch away. It doesn't need any more equip equipment than your needle thread and your own fingers. I've finished this one and I think it looks really pretty. So my lovely dress fabric on the back and that just that lovely little bit of hand embroidery off the old tray cloth. So I've slip stitched up to the corner that I finished on. I think probably it doesn't matter whether you do big stitches or little stitches. I like to do little ones as I can. So we're going to put the, the front, I, I always definitely feel this is the front and that that's the back. So I'm going to put the two fronts together, matching point to point, and then I try and do the tiniest stitches, little whip stitches, that are just picking up threads on each side. And I do about 18 to 19 stitches across the well, across these ones anyway, these inch and a half ones. And I'm sure you could do less. Um, but I think by taking them as tiny as you can, what happens is that you they really do become almost invisible. And so that even from the other side, even from the side I'm working on, which is the wrong side, I suppose. Um, even when you open them up you can't hardly see the stitches. I suppose you could ladder stitch them either. Uh, ladder stitch is really nice but this I think to me this feels more secure. It's definitely more traditional to be whip stitching them rather than um, ladder stitching them. But this is how I like to do them anyway. So when I come to the edge, well these are just two so I'll have to finish this one off. But if I was fixing it onto another one I'd then bend, bend that one and do, do the next. But I will do another one. I'll probably make this into something for Christmas for someone. I'm just going to do three little overcasts there. And then snip off. And if I open that up. You can see that you can hardly see those stitches on that side and then on this side they're virtually invisible which is nice. So I've finished my other one, my third one. I've got it to that stage and now obviously I need to do that so you do have to bend them but these are, these are very soft so it is easy to just bend that one over in half so that those two edges are then lying together and again I don't bother pinning I don't think it's necessary really when they're just so little I've done an extra couple of stitches at the corner there to secure it and I'm going to do the same here just do a couple of stitches together to secure the stress line of it and then I'm just carrying on a couple of threads on each one down to the end and in this way you can make any pattern you like I, I'm really happy with random what I really like about them is there's nothing to take apart so no papers to cut and no papers to take out no basting whether it's glue or thread I don't care just I just don't want to do that but what I really really like about them is that they're like little framed artworks of each fabric that you showcase. As I say the hexiform comes in all the traditional shapes, jewels, diamonds, squares and it makes it even easier. I suppose it would be expensive for a big project um, but you, there's nothing stopping you cutting your own out. Uh, I just I just haven't done a big, a big enough project to make that worth it. So there's three together, which already looks lovely. And you just keep on adding them and keep on adding them. 
And so for my table runner, I just kept adding them on until I had big long rows of it. Um, what I did want to do is I felt as if I needed to put an edging on. I wasn't really happy with just this, the edge of it. It wasn't that I wasn't happy with the zigzag. It just felt as if it needed something else. And I did have a look around to see if anybody was finishing them anyway. I couldn't find anything. So when I was thinking about a crochet border, I thought, well, I'll have to go around with blanket stitch or something to make um, an edge for the crochet to start on, which led me to think, why didn't I just do some needle lace? And so I'm going to show you that now. I've got a needle, it's got quite a sharp point with a largish eye, and I've got quite a long thread doubled up in it. Um, you could have used, I could have used a single thread, it's just this is the way I decided to do this um, for no other reason than that's what I did. So I've, instead of putting it through with the loop at the needle end, I've actually threaded the, the tails through the, through the eye of the needle because I don't want to start with a knot at all. So because I'm starting from up here on my little scallop, I'm just going to go straight through there with my needle. And when I get to the loop, I'll go through the loop. And then that means that I haven't needed a starting knot at all. And I'm now ready to carry on with what I'm doing. So the main thing is with this is my thumb is really making the scale of the lacing. See, actually, that one is a little bit big. I think I was working with quite a short thread by I came to finish off. But really, this is the sort of size. And I need one in the top. So I'm just going to take a little piece of the binding and pull through. And then use my thumb. I'm going to pull them nice and... I'm going to use my thumb to just make sure that I'm making the little loop that I would like to make. And then I'm going to make sure that is opened up and I'm going to go through the loop again and make a blanket stitch that's sort of going back, going that way. So that's just a normal blanket stitch. But I'm going to hold it all together because I want it to be I want that blanket stitch to make its way right down onto the bottom and it's made a knot and now that's stable. So to make the little legs of my scallops I'm now going to make all together four blanket stitches on top of this double thread scallop. So I'm coming back the other way now and blanket stitch that way and I'm going to pull the knot right down to the other one. So that's two three, four. Make sure they're all pulled tight together. I'll see if I can hold that up so you can see it better. You can see my scallop is just the two threads. There's my four blanket stitch and I'm ready to make the next scallop. And it took me a while to figure out exactly how many little scallops I was doing and I've ended up with um, four legs going up each side and a little leg in the apex. So I just need to make sure there's four going down here and I just do it by eye. So I'm going to take a little, maybe a couple of millimetres worth of fabric there in my needle, pull it round and I just need to sort of make sure that my thumb is making that that scallop. If you you can leave it as long as you like, there's it's so able to be adjusted. I could leave a great big scallop there, and on my next round, I'd end up with really big loops, which it's all just whatever you want. But I just wanted a quite a nice little neat. I wanted a nice little neat edge like that. So I'm making them quite small. But the main thing is that you, once, you've, once you've done that, you're going back into this loop and pulling that, pulling that double thread around. I'll show you how that looks. 
and the double threads going around the needle and then you sort of need to hold it there so that you're not will get pulled tight right down at the fabric and then it is stable and I'm going to make another three blanket stitches through there to make the leg of the scallop so that's two There's number three, and here's number four. At the beginning I was making them all different. I couldn't decide what I was going to do. But this is this is how I've ended up doing it. And, and whether it's this thread or not, I keep getting the thread twisted, so I have to untwist it every so often. I'll just untwist my thread, and I'm on to the next one. So the, this is my second scallop going down. Or behind the needle okay so I'm holding them together I know that that's going to make me it all stretches out a bit so if I do it like that it's probably going to make me the scallop that I want so through the loop around the back of the needle to make a blanket stitch and pull it tight to the to the fabric and then three more blanket stitch Always try and pull them tight up to the one you've made before. Three, one more, four. I'm going to carry on till I get to the end of this thread and I'll show you just how it gets finished off. So I'm actually finishing at the top of the leg, top of the little leg of the scallop. I'm going to go, I'm going to thread my needle down the leg of the scallop and just pull that nice and smoothly, put my needle in where the other ones come out and I'm just going to thread it along and pull out anywhere and pull my needle out, pull this nice and smoothly so it's not tight at all and then I can just clip those threads off. So that shows you the first row of my needle lace. So for the second row, I'm actually you're just using a single thread. Um, I can't quite think why I did that. I just, I don't know, but I, I am. So because I've already got a single thread, I do have a knot on the bottom. This is where I finished off my other thread. So this is the first scallop that I'm going to have to do. So I'm just going to go up under the binding and then straight up the leg of the scallop until I get to the top. And I'm just going to pull my knot into the binding of the hexi. Like that. And now I'm ready to carry my second row on. And it's just blanket stitch, pure and simple. Um, but I try and make sure that each scallop has the same amount and it really is just blanket stitching around that double thread bar but again pulling pulling them on really nicely as you go so two three four Five. Should I put six on there? I think I do just sometimes make it up. I think six. I definitely only put three here because I want this. This is obviously at the internal angle, so I'll just skip straight over to the next scallop. I'm going to put three in there. Two, three, and three. Skip to the next scallop. You do tend to have to hold on to this thread um, or else it sort of wiggles about a bit. So one and I use quite a long thread because I just don't want to be finishing off all the time. I need to be as little, little finishing off and as few breaks in the thread as I can get away with. That's three. I'll unwind my thread. 
four, five, I'll put six in I think, six, straight on to the next one. And you can see how quick it is. You're not, you're not having to push your needle through fabric or anything. So it's actually, it's not, it's not a very slow, it's very small, but it's not very slow as, as things go. Five and six. And so I've got sort of quite rectangular little scallop shapes, which is, what I had envisaged because I did think at first I might have thread ribbon through like an insertion but I've decided I don't want to do that. Um, also when I get to the points up here I could have done something like a little pico or I could have done something quite fancy but my feeling was that the the edging is just an edging and the whole um, focus of my runner is definitely the, the quilt as you go hexes. And so if I was going to do this needle lace and put a fancier edging on, then I would have used a plainer, a plainer fabric for the material. So you can see how that's coming out so pretty. It makes a lovely firm edging. I could do another little loop there. And make that point come out. I could do a little pico, but actually, I just I just want the edging to be quite plain. So I'm going to go straight over to the next one, and I'm going to put nine into here as well. This this edging could be done. Well, obviously, it could be done in a finer a finer thread, and it would be very very delicate indeed. But also, there's nothing stopping it being done in a thicker a thicker thread, or like a soft cotton. Uh, I do think this, this shiny crochet thread is showing it up really well. It comes out really, really pretty. It's making a really nice edging for this table runner. And then, so I've got to get round the corner and right back down the other side. But actually, that's, that's not a lot of work. It's just... Well, it is a lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot of work, but it's enjoyable. And uh, once I've done my tea goes round. I don't need to do anything else, just give the whole thing a press at the end and it'll be ready to look super gorgeous on my table. Let's see if I can bring you right in to see it. But you can see it's just blanket stitch. But on the back there's not much to see. You don't you're only coming through a tiny bit of the fabric there. So it's equally nice both sides. I hope you felt that that was um, worth it for a, a little tutorial on the Quilt As You Go Hexes. Um, I'm still not quite finished around that runner, but I haven't got far to go now. So I'll be really pleased when that's finished. Um, I've got another couple of uh, smaller things to get out of the way, um, but I'm on with them. And believe it or not, I've got another dress to make and I'm just going to show you because I might actually film it. It's going to be a bit of an odd one. I actually, well, I've got this fabric, which is jersey, which is really lovely. I'll show you. It's got lovely patterns on it. It's got butterflies and snails and bees. And I've had it since March this year. That's when I got it. I had sewing for pleasure. With the intention of making a long sleeve top and then I went off the idea. So I just thought uh, that I'd make myself another dress because I love wearing dresses and then just today I found this in a charity shop which is actually quite a big man's um, sweater. But what's nice about it is it's, it's a nice pale grey and it's really soft and it's really warm and I thought it would make a nice pinafore top. So the original idea is to cut the hood off, cut the sleeves out, make bigger armholes so I can make the pinafore. Because what I really like is the way it closes here. I like this, I like this whole piece at the front. And I'm going to cut the bottom off and sew the skirt on. Uh, and after I tried it on, I actually 
quite like the hood as well and that's not something I would wear normally at all so now my idea is to cut the bottom off put the skirt on and then try it on again and see whether I do want it as a pinafore or not and if I don't I'll have to take it all in at the shoulders because it's just far too big for me so I'd have to take the shoulders in and reset the sleeves but that's fine because in the end it'll make a nice dress so that's another thing that I'm probably on with over the next week but I'm on with my next bird page thank you very much for all of your lovely comments about the green man bag and all of the lovely uh, happy birthday wishes that you've given me um thank you so much and i i really will try and um get in touch with someone about printing them not sure whether they'd print the image from my embroidery or whether i'd paint it again i haven't got a clue i'm the most useless person at business and that's not even an understatement i'm only good at doing stuff <laughs> i'm not good at selling selling anything so it is something I'd like to do going forward, so I will see what I can do and I'll keep you updated. But thank you so much for all the birthday wishes and all the lovely, encouraging comments you've made. I really, 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 really appreciate them all. And press the like button, uh, please. Let YouTube know that you've enjoyed watching what I've been doing. And please subscribe if you'd like to carry on seeing. If you want to see how I turn that, and that into a dress for the winter um, and I look forward to uh, reading your comments uh, later so thank you very much for watching and for being there at the other end of the <laughs> of the camera lens and um, bye from Marion's World thank you so much